Hello Sagittarius friends, welcome to my January 2020 horoscope report for you. This is going to be a very honest assessment of this time from a fellow Sagittarius. I know this chart better than I know most of the charts, even though I know all of them really well, because I'm going through this experience with you. It is my intention for this video to give you the things that I think that you need in order to make the most of the challenges and the sweet spots this month. In the cases where there are going to be some rough spots, I want to give you pieces that will help you to create alchemy in your life to push through the challenges and create something awesome. There are way tons of awesome potentials this month, and there are some ones that are not as awesome. So I'm going to give you the good, the bad, and the ugly, and we're just going to hash it all out here. So the first thing that we want to talk about is this potential for mega windfalls of cash. This is not clickbait. <laughs> this is absolute truth. Anytime this second house is aspected in a, a signs chart, money is more likely. You know, when we look at astrological aspects, it's not, we don't know what's going to happen for every single person. It's impossible because there are so many variables for each individual with their personal charts and their perspectives and all of these things, how something's going to manifest. But it's like meteorology in the way that there could be a 90% chance of showers and it indeed does rain. Or it can be a 90% chance of showers and it doesn't rain. But the more energy you have in an area, and you can see this second house, money house, look at all this energy. And by the way, for those of you um, who have seen me put up the middle and late degree charts, if you're in the middle or the late latter part of the sign, what we're talking about this month is going to be the same for all of you, regardless of your Sag placement. So even though I'm using this early chart, everything I'm talking about is for all of you, unless I otherwise differentiate out. And if you have Sag rising or a moon in Sag or a sun in Sag, this report is for you equally. Okay, so when you have all of these, um, every planet that's in a location is another percentage of odds that this field of life is going to come up in a big way. Major transformation. This Pluto-Saturn lineup only happens once every 34 years, and it only happens in this sign, which makes it fall in this house for you, this money house, much more rarer than that. So it would be like, you know, 34 times 12, something like that, uh, how rare what's happening actually is. So the chance for a massive amount of money to come to you is really, really increased. Now, the ugly part about it, I have to be honest, is that Pluto rules death. Sometimes it's figurative death. Sometimes something just ends. It comes to a completion and it's figurative, like nobody dies, right? Um, so it could just be like you sell a business or you cash in stock or something you've been working on for your business goes in this magical way, there is so much potential for the hard work that you've put in over the years to pan out for you in like a crazy astonishing way. But there is also a chance because Pluto does rule a literal death that the way some money might come to you might be from somebody else passing. So I hope that that is not true, but I want to mention it. And the reason I want to mention it is because whenever I see something like this going on in someone's personal chart when I'm doing a reading for them, I'll, I'll tell them exactly what I'm telling you, which is because there's an increased chance of something like that happening, my recommendation is to just be right with everybody in your life. Forgiveness, saying unsaid things, coming with you know, heart space, clearing out, you know, resentments, you know, um, and just being right with everybody in your life. Because in the event that it does, the more rare event, right, that it does manifest this way, then you will be so glad. And I have had people contact me and tell me, Annie, it went this way. And I'm so glad you told me that because, because you said to do that, I was right with them and now I don't have regrets and now I have healing and now it went this different way. So that's why it's so important for me to mention this, okay? So just be right with everybody in your life. And in the event that nobody crosses over, then you're just closer to the um, harmonious, peaceful, 
happy, content life that you want anyway. And what's interesting about this is that financial debts and karmic debts and you know, like energetic debts between people are all the same thing energetically. So if you feel like someone owes you something or you feel guilty because you feel like you owe someone else something, sometimes that manifests in the form of financial debt because money is just energy like everything else. So if you offer forgiveness and you have true healing within you from that, it's very possible that that alone, just offering the forgiveness could be what wipes some financial debts, which could improve your finances. So it could be that debt is cleared up um, from different ways, maybe from an influx of cash or maybe from some other magical way. But the second house, the house of your priorities, the house of your money, the house of your budget, the house of your savings, this is like majorly, majorly coming up. Time to rein in that madness from Jupiter moving through Sagittarius where possibly a little bit of excess occurred. And I know I'm, I'm right there with you. I have nine placements in Sagittarius. So everything that goes on for Sagittarius is like ninefold for me. I just got back a few days ago from a four month trip in my RV, right? Typical Sag. And the timing is exact with this energy moving of Jupiter into Capricorn. So maybe you accumulated some debt this year. Maybe you flounced around a little bit extra, you know, maybe you relaxed and, you know, just kind of enjoyed things. And now is a time where you have to get your eye back on the ball, get your head back in the game, get your strategy together, do some of the things that you've been avoiding, um, possibly do a lot of the things you've been avoiding because starting in February, the wall of personal planet retrogrades is going to come upon us. And what that means is that launches, big decisions, big restructuring, big um, moves and big uh, anything is going to be um, less interfered with in the month of January than for the rest of the year because especially the active things that you want to do. There may be many things that the retrogrades just roll into you over this year and when you take your hands off the wheel that's more likely but we'll be talking about that like over the next many 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 months and I have many resources that will help you to see the beautiful things about the retrogrades and use them for that. But if you've got like a big launch and you're like, oh, I'll do it in the summer, I'll do it there, I'll do it, whatever. You know, there's going to be obstacles, delays, second guessing, reconsidering, you know, um, lack of impetus, lack of uh, you know, drive that could come from these retrogrades. So if you can do a bunch of work now, and of course I give these to you a month early, so if you're listening to this in December, or even at the end of November when I'm gonna post it, get your button gear. That's the biggest message. Get your button gear, use the end of November, all of December, all of January to just like bust it out, do all the stuff, get it out, get it going. And then it's going to be easier for you to navigate through those retrogrades and the odds that your finances are going to soar will be increased, okay? So you, you may have to do some work now to receive the highest benefit of that potential mega windfall in January. That's why it makes me crazy to try to you know think about people posting things like close to when they're relevant because you need that time, you know, to prepare. It's kind of like preparing for a trip. You know, I always have a backpack ready. I have my homeopathic remedies. I have my lip balm. I have, you know, like all of the sanitizer and stuff in my backpack. So if I'm ready for a little adventure, I have it there, right? But sometimes we need to know a little bit more about the terrain that we're covering if we're traveling or, or you know, what the weather is going to be like, things like that. And that's why talking about this, all of this beforehand will really help to equip you for using the energies in the best way. Okay, so something else that is very relevant that's going on is that Mars is going into our sign. So this is very exciting. Um, Mars is how we use our energy. And Mars in Sag, the style of using your energy matches with how you are. So let's get a little visual on this out of the way here. The energy of Sagittarius moves in an upward spiral. Okay, so it's optimistic. It's always seeking to go onward and upward, you know, and, and it's all over the place. So it pulls in, it goes out. That's what, it's mutable. Okay, that's what the spiraling energy is in astrology. It's mutability. That's why we're so flexible. That's why we're like, all right, well, we can do that. Okay, whatever, we can do that. All right, we can do that, right? Because of this energy that comes down to this. So when Mars moves in that 
in that way. We're over here, we're gonna do this, we're over here, we're gonna do this, now we do this. Now if you have your Mars natally in Sagittarius, which I do, <laughs> you know, then you like clean one dish, you do one piece of laundry, you like move something on your desk rather than like doing all the laundry at once or doing all the dishes at once. It's kind of this scattered energy. But it's very uplifting, it's very inspiring, and it's um, it's very um, exhausting. But I love the combination of this upward spiral and this inspiration, this optimism to help balance out. Okay, again, I'm using the early chart, but this is true for all Saggies. For this Mars moving into the sign of Sag, it's like, it's a buoy, you know, because all of this cap energy, even though it can be amazing for manifestation, things that you've worked on your whole life can totally gel this month. Huge way. But it can be really somber as well. It could be serious, it could be depressing, it could be heavy, um, and it could be a lot of work. So this this Mars and Sag energy kind of like it's this sprinkle where you can, you know, um, kind of like it makes me think of listening to music you like when you clean, so that when you're cleaning, you're not even noticing. Or listening to an audiobook if you're going somewhere driving and then before you know it, you're already there. You know what I mean? It's like that, that element of this Sag um, Mars can really help the journey of the hard work and the persistence and the challenges that may come with these other cap things can really um, help with the journey, to make the journey better. And that's part of what my goal is for doing this work too, is how can we make this journey um, as great as possible, right? So things are going to happen that are challenging, that's just life, but we can soften some of these things, okay? So see how you can sprinkle a little bit of fun you know, if you find you've been working too hard, schedule in some, you know, periodic rests or little trips or something like that. Time to be random. Something else that's happening is Venus is still moving through Aquarius. And that's going to be really for the first half of January. But this is really great because it's in a sweet aspect with our Sag placements. And Venus rules love, beauty, and money. So it increases the odds that, you know relationship, confidence, fulfillment, you know, comfort, just sweet little smooches all over are going to come to us. So every Sag placement you have, then between um, December and January, it, Venus is going to kiss them all. So I really, really like that about this time for us. Now, another truth bomb is that the eclipses are going to be powerful and that Cancer one on the 10th is not in a, a nice angle for us. All right, let's just check this out here. So Cancer energy, you can't really see this, but I'm gonna show you anyway. It's, oh yeah, you can see it. It's one, two, three, four, five signs away from Sag. All right, so don't mind that this is, we're not even looking at that glyph, I'm just showing you where the Cancer energy is in relation to the Sag energy. So, Cancer makes a 150 degree angle with Sagittarius. That is an awkward angle. That is the angle of ships passing in the night, and not connecting at all, or when someone says something, you're like, I do not even understand what you're doing. Those people you just don't get, those situations you just don't get, where you're like, that's awkward. That's uncomfortable. I don't like it. So it increases the odds that this eclipse is going to be super emotional. Okay, so that's kind of sandwiched between it. It could factor into these cap things that we talked about. Um, you know, because of this proximity to the eighth house, again, ruled by Pluto, rules birth, death, transformation, rebirth. Um, significant births could happen now. That's another, you know, positive thing that could occur. But in any case, the energies of the eclipses, the one at the end of December and the one in January are, well, especially the one in January, is at an awkward angle for us. So it increases the odds that it's going to be emotional. Some of it could be good, but it could be pretty stressful. And it's going to target home and deep relationships. You know, home, family, residence, real estate, deep relationships, money, um, family, marriage, all of those things, there there could be some notable things there that you have to deal with that are awkward, that aren't feeling really good. 
by the way, I have done a major in-depth um, set of tutorials of what, what these eclipse cycles could be bringing you, how the storyline between the middle of 2018 and the middle of 2020, how, what's, how, when was the last time it happened, what's going on, where is this aspecting for us. So the places to look to get more details that I'm giving you here about this, um, these eclipses, look for my January eclipse report for Sagittarius. If you go to Annie Botticelli on YouTube and you search for the Sag playlist, then all of this stuff will just be in there and you can just find everything. Um, but you can search, you know, on my YouTube channel for the, the January eclipse. It's different than this January general horoscope for you. It's an eclipse um, focus and it will talk about this eclipse, where it's hitting and what I've seen come from the places where it's where they're going to be light, it's going to be lit up for you. To get an in-depth review of this end of December eclipse, listen to my November report. Even if even if that time has passed, you can scroll through it, and I'll get to where the eclipses, um, you know, eclipse part is in that. Because in the November report, I talk about the December eclipse because we often feel these early, so I like to prep you beforehand. So. January into February, you know, is going to carry a lot of intensity. So just be prepared for that. I always say to, to kind of make the most of this, be well rested. I know you have to work hard and we talk about all of these things going on, but being well rested is going to help you deal with everything better. Also, I recommend having a meditation practice. Not super easy for Sagittarius to meditate every day. I know it. But if you, if you have a meditation practice, then it's a grounding cord for you. Part of why I've been able to be so productive and have success in my endeavors, I believe, is because I've meditated every day for over a decade without fail. And being all over the place as we are, being sagi, we really need that grounding cord. So yoga, getting in touch with your breath, just you know, setting a timer just to remember to tune into your breath, walking, um, meditating, those things are going to help you maintain your clarity and discharge your energy field so that as these emotions are coming, um, you can better deal with them, you know? So, and if you have to make life-changing decisions based on things that have come to you, January is one of the best months of the year to do that. So it's kind of lined up really nice that way. Okay, so just the general overview again, lots of intensity, um, lots of potentials, big money stories. Um, Mars boosting, giving that nice boost as it passes through our Sag placements, brings ambition, brings impetus, um, can also bring things just coming in, you know, highlighting publishing and writing and teaching and traveling and things like that might be coming up, which we love all that stuff. Overall, I think a really great month for Sagittarius, um, really life-changing month, and the, definitely the potential for drama, but definitely the potential for alchemy. Make sure that you claim your free access to my 28-day virtual coaching program called Shine. You can do this by going to AnnieHelpsYou.com. When you sign up for my free email newsletter, and I promise I don't spam you, I only send out three emails a month, and that's all with lots of things that are helpful for you for the times that are going on. Just, you know, information filled um, with other links, ancillary links and things that I create to help you. So you get access to my um, free or my virtual coaching program for free when you sign up for my newsletter. I definitely take care of the people in my email community. So you can do that. You also get a written report of all of the notable aspects, the dates of those aspects, what you may expect from those, and just some general thoughts about what the month will bring in writing. That's a general transit report. It's true for all signs. You get that when you sign up for my free email newsletter at AnnieHelpsYou.com. If you love how I teach and you want to learn, if you want to be a professional astrologer, sign up for my course called Becoming a Professional Astrologer. I give you absolutely everything that you need to do readings. Sometimes people will start doing professional readings even before the end of the course. It's very, very in-depth, as you can see from the, the way that I do things. If you feel like you've got karma that, that has to be cleared and you want to get more in line with finding your purpose and living in your purpose, I have a new reading option called Clear Karma and Live Your Purpose. You can see that at AnnieHelpsYou.com. I also um, have a course called Secrets of Six-Figure Consulting. 
So, or six, you know, secrets of, of a six figure consultant, basically. So if you are a teacher, a consultant, and you want to take your business up to the next level, then you will love to see this course and understand the secrets involved in doing that. If you want to have written horoscopes by me, go to CozyBySweetStarlight.com. And if nothing else, just go to that site to see how pretty it is. You can see the links to these um, two sites that I'm giving you underneath um, the videos in the notes. But CozyBySweetStarlight.com, I do written horoscopes for each sign each month, a month early. I also have an astrology for wellness blog that has how ways you can maximize the sun in each sign. Um, I have a new um, series called Herbal Teas for each sign. So when the sun is in that sign or when there's a special moon in that sign or if you have a lot of placements in a certain sign, herbs that work really well for those placements and other healthy lifestyle blogs that I think you will love. So I hope you have a wonderful month and I'll see you next month. Bye.